Everyone became enamored with the wonders Jurassic Park had to offer. Maybe no one more than Steven Spielberg himself, who, with the first film, uncovered this miraculous toy box that allowed dinosaurs to walk the Earth again and invited audiences to take an exciting adventure. It's plain to see why he'd want to go back uh, to this material with a sequel, uh, with special effects technology rapidly advancing, and with a reliable source work in Michael Crichton's uh, follow-up novel, there was more story to tell, and there was a different angle to this concept. Instead of this park with borders and fences and containment, uh, there was this whole new island uh, with the dinosaurs outside of captivity, living in the wild, and of course the humans who intervene and learn severe lessons. So there was a grand opportunity with the Lost World Jurassic Park to explore the concepts of dinosaurs in the age of man even further. And it does, but with results that unfortunately don't really live up to the effect that the first film had. Maybe the most problematic factors come from the screenplay. I can't claim to be an authority on Crichton's novel, so I can't really say one way or another if it remain faithful or straight entirely, but the overall plot of the movie is both very busy, yet ultimately doesn't achieve all that much. Uh, so, okay, we have Jeff Goldblum uh, back as Ian Malcolm. That's pretty awesome. It makes good sense to bring back the character who was arguably uh, the standout and uh, have him star here, uh, though the plot to get him back to the island is just littered with uh, contrivances and basically filled with a great many by-the-ways. So it stems from Hammond calling Malcolm up for a mysterious meeting. And by the way, in case you're wondering, he did go public about everything that happened on Isla Sorna, but InGen, the company, covered it all up and tarnished his reputation. And by the way, Hammond lets him know that there's a second island, Isla Nubar, filled with all these dinosaurs outside of captivity. And... By the way, Malcolm's girlfriend is on the island, giving him the motivation to venture back there and rescue her. And by the way, Malcolm has a daughter who has stowed away and come along with him to the island. And by the way, Hammond's successor at InGen has also come to the island with a team of mercenaries to capture dinosaurs. So that's the plot in a nutshell. I think a lot of what we see here, story-wise, may have been a response to the few criticisms of the first film, uh that it didn't have quite enough characterization, not enough of the human touch. Uh, the human element to Jurassic Park was subtle, but I think it worked on its own level for what it was. And we got just the right amount of it, too. Uh, here with The Lost World, uh, it's, it's almost kind of ridiculous uh, how much is thrown at us in an attempt to give Malcolm a proper character arc. He's not the best boyfriend in the world, always letting his girlfriend Sarah down, uh, never being there for her. Uh, as, as we learn through exposition, uh, he's not the best father in the world either. Uh, he's been trying to reconnect uh, with his daughter, uh, but always letting her down and never being there for her either. Aw, shucks. Poor guy. Uh, so here he is pitted in the worst possible situation on the island with the dinosaurs. All the danger, all the, the, the running, and uh, the screaming, and trying to juggle his relationships uh, with the two important women in his life. And at the same time spouting off the morality lessons that mostly fall on deaf ears. If the complaint of the first film was that there was too little characterization... With this sequel, it's maybe too much, and it's all too blatant, uh, lacking in any kind of tact with the mounds of exposition that we get. And really, what does it all amount to? Uh, did this experience bring them all closer together? Uh, through this, did Malcolm learn to be a better boyfriend and a better father? Well, at the end, they all sit on the couch and eat popcorn and watch TV, so that's Hollywood's official signifier of... Everyone's happy and everything's going to be okay, so maybe. Good characters are always a plus, but for this kind of movie, we're here to see the dinosaurs, of course. We're here to see the action scenes. And that's the main area where the movie can surpass all other easily forgivable uh, faults with the plot and the characters and win the audience by delivering the thrills. These scenes range from pretty good and effectively thrilling to head-scratchingly underwhelming. I really like the scene uh, where, never failing, it's pouring rain, uh, and the trailer is dangling over cliff with the glass breaking below and certain death awaiting, 
All while at the top of the cliff, uh, the T-Rex is attacking. In fact, this time there are two T-Rexes, and certain death waits above. It probably features my favorite line from the movie, which I consider sort of a sequel to Goldblum's Faster, Must Go Faster, uh, from the first film, uh, when he and his girlfriend, they're climbing the rope, and he spouts, increase your rate of climb. Uh, little Goldblumisms like that are always a welcome touch. There are two key moments featuring the Compies, these tiny, seemingly harmless lizard-like dinosaurs in the opening. Uh, they attack a little British girl, and, and later in a scene with Peter Stormare, who at the time was fresh off of Fargo, gets attacked by a swarm of them when he, like all the geniuses in these types of movies, strays from the group. In all fairness, he had it coming. He shocked one of them with the electric prod earlier, so we can't feel too bad for him. A lot of the tentpole action sequences feel a bit too monster movie-esque here, uh, which is something the first movie avoided, uh, but there are far too many ridiculous character decisions, and close call after close call, uh, cheesy kind of moments, like where the T-Rex is pursuing the group, and they all hide under the waterfall, and, and the monster is just out of reach, snapping at them. Uh, but then, of course, expendable mercenary guy number 3B discovers a snake sl slithered into his shirt, so he runs out towards the dinosaur, screaming, Ah, snake! And, of course, he's eaten. Uh, it results in kind of a cool effect uh, with the, the blood uh, pouring down the waterfall. So that was pretty cool, I'll, I'll admit that. Then there's another raptor chase, uh, once again with too many close calls. We see Malcolm right within range of these things and kind of darting around to avoid them. And this time around, it's hard to dis suspend your disbelief. Uh, I mean, these raptors, they would have chowed down so easily with any of the other characters. Uh, and indeed they do in an earlier moment when they're in the grass field. And the whole scene is resolved when Malcolm's daughter does some gymnastic flips and knocks the raptor out fuck off. And probably the most talked about moment in the movie is when the T-Rex is transported to San Diego and runs amok like he's King Kong or something. I really have nothing to say of this. It's just the stupidest shit ever. Really. Honestly. Come on. So what happened here? We have Steven Spielberg back. We have Jeff Goldblum back. Uh, we have all the dinosaurs we love and fear and more back. So, how did this go so wrong? Um, I'll maintain, uh, for the most part, it's the film's script, uh, which contains most of the problems, and everything else must have fallen along with it, d despite noble efforts. At the very least, we see the screenwriter, David Kep, in a cameo in the San Diego sequence, mauled by the T-Rex, so the punishment fits the crime. I also think there is a problem uh, in taking such a beloved supported character uh, from the first film, uh, Malcolm, and turning him into the lead. Uh, Goldblum was brilliant in the first film. I can't praise his performance enough. He, he's just great. Uh, but as I mentioned in, in my review for the original Jurassic Park, there is a certain kind of obligation within the scope of such a big, high-profile, expensive production to play it straight in these kinds of roles. And, and I think with the weight of the entire movie on Malcolm as the lead character, I think he does succumb to that. He can't be the quirky side character anymore. He has to be the main character. He has to be heroic and sympathetic. So Malcolm, almost by pure requirement of the plot, has to be more straightforward and serious. He still has the familiar traits, the patented Goldblum stammering and wit, but... In The Lost World, he almost feels like a different character. He's just too exposed, and that's no good. The rest of the cast fares well. Uh, there's a lot more characters uh, than in the original, and at least the important non-expendable folks in the cast do hold their own. Julianne Moore is good as Sarah. There's a nice cockiness to her character, and we believe in her passions. Vince Vaughn is fine here, too, as the video documentarian. He has some amusing lines here and there. Arliss Howard, as InGen's Peter Ludlow, and John Hammond's nephew, by the way, is appropriately slimy in his role, and has another favorite line of mine when he's staring down Malcolm in the beginning. This suit costs more than your education. I think it's the great Pete Postlewaite that ends up stealing the show, playing the leader of InGen's expedition, who 
doesn't want any money for his services, instead wanting to hunt and kill a Tyrannosaurus Rex. He seems to be the one character here, not bound by any kind of convention. He's unpredictable. He's a little antagonistic, but he's compelling, and he does end up having a, a nice little character arc. Postlewaite is terrific in his role and a saving grace of the film. Steven Spielberg is one of the greatest directors in the history of film. His craft and skill is undeniable. He's adventurous and innovative, and he takes risks. That's what we love about him. But everyone has a bad day here and there, I guess. Uh, for every Saving Private Ryan, there may be a 1941, and for every Jurassic Park, there may be a Lost World. With even more elaborate special effects that still hold up serviceably today, and some good action scenes, and yet another fantastic score from John Williams, this time incorporating unique tribal drum vibes to the already iconic theme music. Uh, Top-notch sound, editing, cinematography. This is a great-looking movie, uh, dark and noir-like, visually different from the first film. The brilliant technical aspects are not immune to a flawed and sometimes just plain silly plot. I rate The Lost World Jurassic Park two stars out of four. This is a disappointing and forgettable trip back to the park. I'd rather watch the original. The Lost World, that's my review. Uh, disappointing, forgettable, and, and that's really the thing too. I mean, I, I've seen this movie a, a fair amount of times. Um, and in fact, just for, for watching it, uh, for the purposes of kind of having it fresh in my mind for this review, uh, I watched it again. I was, I was really surprised uh, by how little I, I remembered of the movie. So I was kind of getting into it a little bit. I was like, okay, maybe this is better than I remember. And I, I don't know. It's just kind of absurd scene after absurd scene. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could go into greater detail, but why bother? Like, to, to go back to that waterfall scene, it just was so silly. Like, the, 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 the T-Rex was licking Julianne Moore with this big tongue. It was like in something out of Aliens or something. And uh, another absurd part of that was Vince Vaughn. He's he's holding uh, uh, Kelly, uh, uh, Goldblum's daughter. He's like, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Then he hears a T-Rex like, we're all going to fucking die! <laughs> but whatever, not really. But he's like, it's coming back, you know? Then, out of the waterfall, it's Jeff Goldblum. Like, what? The, I literally... I, I put my hands up. I was like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? Anyway, um, not too crazy about it. So that's my review. Do you agree with me? Do you think it's underrated? Uh, let me know below. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, Jurassic Part 3, uh, the masterpiece uh, coming up next, uh, what I'll review. And in the meantime, I thank you for sitting through this review and sticking with me. And uh, plenty more to come. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, I'll see you later.